I just want to make people have a lovely time. Maybe it's not even the fact that I just love singing. I think I just love storytelling. And, you know, I happen to do that with, in singing, like in song. I've been working out actually like what my instincts are, who I am as an artist and what I want to sing and what I want to say when I'm singing and how I want to communicate when I'm singing. I also love just playing, but it's literally just like being kids and playing in a rehearsal room. And it's just like, I have no, um, no shame and I will just try anything in the rehearsal room. <laughs> I feel like that's probably one of my big selling points that people will be like, yeah, Mary will do it. All right, okay. <laughs> I was aware of what opera was, but I didn't really say that when I was a kid, I was into it. I was, I loved musicals. Uh, I was always singing that, I was obsessed with Wicked. Um, and then I did Cathedral Choir at Liverpool when, when they very first had a girls choir. It's not an easy time training, um, but I had a good time there. I've met loads of great people. I feel like I lost a lot of myself the whole time I was training there. I was there for six years and um, I lost a lot of my instincts with performance and things by getting so consumed by just the college life and like comparing to everything and, and um, what kind of little box do you fit into before we send you into the world and like trying to force myself into a little box <laughs> to be sent into the world in the box wasn't so great for me it's like you feel like especially through college you have to hide under a rock until you're perfect and there's no place for a work in progress artist to be out there showing what they can do and i mean it's just not true you can work before you're perfect if you just like appreciate the other things that you have to offer, which is not just this perfect sound, which is ready to go. It's the telling the story, it's the being the character, it's being a nice colleague to, you know, wardrobe and to the director and to the stage management and everyone, like making, like having it, like it's like a little family when you're doing a show. Oh yeah, I mean, the pandemic, there was about four times when I was like, I'm not gonna be singing, that's it. Give it up forever, bye bye, okay. And there were moments when I did that actually, where I kind of felt this relief where I was like, thank God I don't have to stress about this anymore. I don't have to worry about getting the work. I don't have to worry about being good enough to do it. I don't have to worry about all the imposter syndrome that we all go through. But um, I, I, I come back to it every time. I, will, I, I always came back to it. I think, and people see, see that front all the time. They see the front of like also glamorous and like, you know, all the, the, the clothes and the dresses and the makeup and everything of being an opera singer. And it's like, actually, there's no money, and uh, and pretty much all of this makeup is cheap boots and stuff. <laughs> it's like that's the showbiz, isn't it? That's the glamour of it. People wanna people wanna see this glamorous, and people don't really so much want to hear about all the other stuff they're doing. This working at home and they're doing the data admin job and like in order to pay your rent, all that kind of stuff. people don't like. Yeah, they don't like to live in that world. But I think it's important, especially for for singers coming out of college and like singers wanting to go into this profession that they see that actually that's 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 fine and you can juggle both and you can do both and you can just like there's no one mold for anything you just live your life i work full time uh from home as well <laughs> basically any day i have off from them i'll be rehearsing for a show i'm you know i'm lucky i've got a lot of work coming singing work coming up i've got a lot of of shows on but i wouldn't be able to afford to live in london with just that work. <laughs> it was so bad, it was so bad. It was a really big fight scene at the end of the um, Havana number in Guys and Dolls. We do a fight call every day before we like did the show. And um, I don't know what happened, but like I just like turned around and I went like to like, throw this punch. And I, like maybe we just didn't quite clock eyes or something, but like I just, I felt my hand hit something and then I was like, and they carried on with the rest of like the number and then I turned back around and she hadn't gotten up off the floor and I was like oh god and then she basically like crawled off <laughs> and I was just like I've broken her face I've broken her face but she was fine she was fine <laughs> TK Maxx great for a, um, a gown <laughs> trust your instincts just keep going just keep just trust your instincts and keep going <laughs>